The push for truth did not prevail. Senate Republicans just blocked a bipartisan commission to investigate the January 6th Capitol attack. Just six Republicans voted in favor of this effort to get the real answers on what happened on that dark day. Just six. Keep in mind, seven Republican senators voted to convict Donald Trump for inciting that insurrection, but apparently an even smaller number want to get answers about that attack on American democracy. Here's Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. The Republican minority just prevented the American people from getting the full truth about January 6th. The Republican minority just prevented the Senate from even debating the bill. Shame on the Republican Party for trying to sweep the horrors of that day under the rug because they're afraid of Donald Trump. Let's get you right to the Hill with CNN's Ryan Nobles. Ryan, the final vote was 54 to 35. How is it that the 35 win? It, it does probably make a lot of people watching at home scratch their heads that the, the overwhelming majority of senators voted to move uh, this commission forward, but it's just not enough. And that's the way the United States Senate works because it requires a super majority if the minority party intends to filibuster something. And that's exactly what we saw here today. The, this vote falling short, only 54 of voting yes. And it did include a collection of Republicans, six Republicans, uh, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska voting yes, Susan Collins of Maine, Bill Cassidy of Louisiana, Ben Sass of Nebraska, Mitt Romney uh, of Utah, and Rob Portman uh, of Ohio. Uh, now, there was another senator, Pat Toomey, uh, from, uh, from Pennsylvania, I should say, uh, who was not here today. Uh, he was among a collection of Republicans that just didn't vote at all. Now, Toomey did release a statement uh, this uh, afternoon saying that he would have voted yes had he been in attendance, but he had a family commitment, but pointing out that had he been here, it wouldn't have mattered because this collection of Republicans that we are showing you here uh, that were not here to vote uh, would have, uh, aside from Toomey, all voted no, and it would have required 10 Republicans to push the bill forward. So, Anna, there is a lot of frustration among Democrats right now, uh, some suggesting that this is another example of why they need to blow up the filibuster because it's just so difficult to get anything accomplished. And this was something that just a couple of weeks ago, Anna, both Republicans and Democrats were calling for. Uh, Democrats made a number of concessions to Republicans uh, to get them on board. It just wasn't enough. So what do you think this means, Ryan, for those six Republicans who voted in favor of the commission? Is this fight within the GOP over? You know, it's hard to forecast, Anna, because uh, among this group, you have uh, a number of Republicans that just won re-election, so they're not going to be in a position where they're going to be forced uh, to face voters in the near future. There's also some uh, that have just decided uh, not to run for re-election, so they're also not going to face the wrath uh, of Trump supporters in an election. But I, I want to just read for you a bit of what Bill Cassidy, the senator of Louisiana, said uh, after uh, this vote. He put out a statement, and he said, quote, the investigations will happen with with or without Republicans to ensure that investigations are fair, impartial, and uh, focused on the facts, Republicans need to be involved. And uh, this kind of gets to the point of what you're talking about here, Anna, that Republicans, uh, to a certain extent, are, are hurting themselves by not allowing this commission to go forward because House Speaker Nancy Pelosi just put out a statement saying that Democrats are not giving up on this, that they are going to continue to seek the truth. Instead of this being an independent bipartisan commission, we're now likely looking at a, at a partisan commission run by Democrats where they'll get to call the shots. And so therefore, that's going to mean a good portion of Americans are going to question the final outcome. That's unfortunate. Ryan Nobles, thank you for your reporting. Republicans apparently didn't see the need to investigate this riot. But here are the facts. No, January 6th was not a normal tourist visit, as Georgia Republican lawmaker Andrew Clyde falsely claims. He knows this. He knows better. Because we have images of him from that very day helping to barricade the doors of the House gallery to keep out the violent mob. No, January 6th was not normal. It was the single worst attack on our nation's capital since the War of 1812. The January 6th attack left five people dead. It left more than 140 others injured. An attack that sent lawmakers and former Vice President Mike Pence running for their lives. An attack carried out largely by Trump supporters and encouraged by Trump and his allies. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore.
Let's have trial by combat. And it's important to remember that this was all because they did not like the result of a free and fair election that was not impacted by widespread voter fraud. No facts, no evidence supporting otherwise, nothing. And that has been backed up by multiple recounts and audits and court rulings. And yet, even today, 56% of Republicans believe the election was rigged. Why? Because of lies. The mob was fed lies. And police officers were savagely beaten, sprayed with chemicals, dragged down concrete steps, trampled, hit with fire extinguishers, crushed with riot shields, and attacked with stun guns. Yeah, I mean, I experienced the most brutal, uh, savage, hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat of my entire life, let alone my policing career, which spans almost two decades. Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick died, suffering two strokes on the day after he confronted the mob. Lawmakers came together to celebrate Officer Sicknick's sacrifice by giving him the rare distinction of lying in honor in the Capitol that he bravely defended. Now Officer Sicknick's mother says the lawmakers standing in the way of that bipartisan commission are failing her son and the nation. This was to uphold the Constitution, and right now I don't think they're doing it. Let's bring in CNN law enforcement analyst and former U.S. Capitol Police Chief Terrence Gaynor. Chief, thanks for being with us. What is your message to Republicans who just voted against this commission? Well, I, I like a lot of others, are disappointed in this, but ironically, earlier this morning, I was at a VA clinic in the south side of Chicago, and in the lobby, there's a, a photo of Abraham Lincoln with the words to care for those who born the battle. And I think today's vote showed that they do not care for those who born the battle and to help prevent something like that from happening again. It needs a comprehensive, real investigation, not these stovepipe things that are going on in multiple branches of the government. This is not a good moment for our Congress and it's certainly not what we expected I think they've let the Capitol Police and others down severely. Senator Lindsey Graham, who met with the mother of fallen police officer Brian Sicknick yesterday, who then voted no today, he released a statement suggesting the officers that he also met with, including uh, Officer Fanone, who we just played a clip of, that they testified before the Senate Rules Committee. Graham saying this, I will suggest that the testimony of the two officers and others be captured to dispel any notion that what happened on January 6th was anything other than a violent, vicious attack on the Capitol. Is a committee hearing enough? No, absolutely it is not, and Senator Graham ought to know better. So many of the members of that Senate are either lawyers, litigators, former prosecutors, even some U.S. attorneys. They know that you have to have full-time investigation, not just ask questions where there's so much rancor in those very committee hearings. So some of the words that are being said now portray them more as sunshine soldier, soldiers as they are anything else. And I don't think the men and women of the uh, Capitol Police need the fair weather friends that so many of these members are talking about now. We need a detail 